right, people are still trickling in, but I'll just get started with the introductions. Hi, everyone. My name is Bethany. I'm the Eastland Meadow Planning Director. Thank you for spending your or choosing to spend your Thursday evening with us in this master plan implementation workshop. So glad to see so many familiar and new faces here. Before we get started, I'll do a, a quick round of introductions. We have our engagement consultants, Fiona Coughlin and Alexis Lanzalotta from the Barrett Planning Group. Fiona and Alexis have been instrumental in coordinating the master plan community engagement activities these last few months. We are also joined by Catherine Rante, Shannon Walsh, Gary Rowe, and Ken Comia from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, who have spent many hours researching, typing, and listening to the feedback from our community as they draft the new master plan chapters. And last but not least, our own master plan steering committee chair and vice chair, Connor O'Shea and Joe Williams, who have diligently volunteered their time and energy in reviewing draft chapters, attending monthly meetings, and leading community activities like tonight's meeting. And I'll pass it over to Connor and Joe to say a few words if you'd like before we turn it over to Fiona to fill you in on the activities planned for tonight's session. Sure, thanks, Bethany. So I'm Connor O'Shea, I'm the chair of the Master Plan Committee. And I also just wanna say thank you to all the other members of the committee as well. We have Pam Blair, who's the Assistant Superintendent for Business for East Almada Public Schools. We have Gordon Smith, who's the Superintendent of Schools. We have Marilyn Richards, who's a town counselor. As Bethany said, we also have Joe Williams, who's a resident. We have Tim Murphy, who's a local business owner and a resident. And we have George Kingston, who's a resident and a member of the planning board. Uh, so thank you all for attending. And I'll pass it to Joe to introduce himself. Thanks, Connor. Uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody for being here today. Um, also, thank you to the uh, PVPC for, for their crucial role in this um, creating of this document. Thanks to Connor. Thanks, everybody on the uh, Master Plan Committee as well. Uh, Bethany as well. Um, looking forward to a, a great event tonight. Thanks, everybody. Fiona? All righty. Thanks, everyone. So, yes, we are going to get started. And um, the well, before we actually before we get started, a big thank you. I know we've done a lot of thank yous already, but we just want to recognize the rest of the um, Master Plan Committee members and all of their hard work throughout this process, especially for us consultants. Really wouldn't be possible without working with you um, throughout. Um, really got to know this town um, and how great it is. And we are super excited to be with you today and finishing up over the next month. So looking forward to that. So today's agenda is, um, so the bulk of what we're going to be doing this evening is going to be discussing the strategies and recommendations that have um, been produced from the draft of the plan. Um, so for the first 15 minutes, I will be providing a brief background, a summary of recent engagement efforts that we've just wrapped up um, with the high school students, um, as well as our survey results. Um, and then from there, I, well, we'll do the breakout sessions for about an hour, um, and then we will come back, reconvene, and we will do our polls um, before wrapping up and showcasing our photo contest winner, which is super exciting. All righty. So just to give you all, I know a lot of folks on this call have been familiar and engaged in this process throughout, but for those who um, are just joining in now um, or need a refresher, um, we are currently in the phase of refining the strategies and recommendations, which is the reason we're all here this evening. Um, we're trying to figure out, you know, what recommendations are feasible, what are not, uh, what will work and what won't, and we need your critical feedback to decipher that. Um, so that is where we are at today. We have reviewed um, and gone over the existing conditions and data, crunched the numbers. We've gathered input through various different, um, uh, different events, including our visioning session, which a lot of folks here have attended. It was super fun for us to do our survey, as I mentioned, um, ongoing master plan committee meetings, focus groups, um, and, uh, the, and the student engagement workshops, which we will summarize for you today. Um, from there, we were able to identify really what are the major issues, what should this plan be focusing on um, over the next 10 years, um, and really how can we make this plan applicable on the ground and um, useful in the East Long Meadow. So from there, we use that to identify um, overarching 
themes, which I'll talk about um, a little bit later in the slideshow, um, which helped then uh, refine our goals and then our draft strategies. So everything is weaved together in a very um, fluid way. And now we are just, at, we're finishing up with our strategies and recommendations, as I said, and then moving into the next phase, which will be implementation later on. So recommendations just for a brief background and, uh, and recap of kind of what the purpose of the recommendations for the plan are they're broad suggestions that the town may or may not pursue over the next um, decade and what we're trying to really nail down here today is uh, what you know obviously we want to make sure that we are accurate and on target with the recommendations that we've provided um, so that is really our focus the um this the strategies and recommendations that we discuss will be laying the groundwork for the next phase, which I just discussed is the implementation um, implementation matrix, um, which will include the really the detailed um, outline of how these are going to be achieved. So including you know funding, responsible parties, um, and you know basically how they're going to be carried out um, and seeing your the plan in action. So I wanted to recap before um, uh, before we start getting kind of breaking out um, the we've done a, a few um, pretty comprehensive uh, efforts in addition to this workshop this evening, as well as our visioning session um, to to gather more feedback. We had a survey that we recently closed where we generated um, 220 responses, um, most folks being residents, 85%. Um, and this is really to supplement uh, the information for th that we'll be receiving this evening. Um, these, I teased out the top priorities um, listed here, which were um, identified as, as high priorities by over 60% of um, survey takers. So the, as we can, you know, as you can see here, there's a lot of kind of recurring um, uh, recurring priorities that folks, it really kind of boiled to the top of this, this survey. Um, and that we've heard throughout, but um, this was really reinforced the information that we had been seeing and hearing. Um, so implementing the sidewalk master plan and um, making sure that sidewalks and crosswalks are improved. That was were kind of the top. And then we also heard about working with farmers to pursue preservation strategies and how can we expand um, farmers markets and buy local campaigns. That was really something that we had heard a lot um, that a lot of participants wanted to see. Um, in addition to those, um, maintaining the updates to the open space and recreation plan, which is typically on a seven year update schedule um, make, and making sure that um, uh, acquisition and pr protection of open space is prioritized throughout the next 10 years in this plan, um, as well as um, revitalizing any vacant or blighted properties in town and really um, Kind of beautifying Isong Meadow as much as possible, um, working with National Grid, identifying vulnerable residents, um, in, especially by working with the Council on Aging, um, and in, uh, particularly concerning utilities. So these were this was really um, you know again we, a lot of information that we we had been hearing, but it was good to you know have that reinforced and see it through the the data in the survey. Um, so from there, once we closed out the survey, we also did a student engagement um, kind of meeting in a box. So we did two, um, uh, and it was really um, fantastic effort um, that we wanted to highlight. The students were very fan, uh, amazing, um, provided really uh, telling feedback. And the, the purpose of working with the students is we kept hearing, you know, we really need to have an intergenerational approach to our community outreach for this plan and how can we get the students more involved and through the efforts of the tireless efforts of LCAT, the committee, Bethany, school staff, who we can't thank enough uh, for everything that they've done. We were able to, um, to get, um, a, a, to have two different sessions. Uh, the first session was about 160 students responded and then about a, a 90 um, on, during the second session. So pretty good turn out they were able to provide feedback during their Spartan block. Um, and we asked them pretty basic questions, you know, what are the town strengths? And a lot of the, what we had heard from the students was the small town feel, which is what we had been hearing kind of across the, the board from other folks, um, the town center, um, the environment, um, current businesses, 
um, teachers and the high school, um, it was um, definitely very, very interesting to see what students were saying and kind of what they want to see improved. So uh, again, the high school, as we've been hearing throughout, it was really something that even the stu that students really wanted to see throughout the lifespan of this, um, of this master plan, um, more activities in town, basketball courts, and uh, better sidewalks. So you know, it's been, uh, it, it was really fantastic to, to see that they, everyone is uh, in town is really kind of on the same page in terms of priorities. Um, that for transportation recommendations, we had heard um, making the rotary safer, bike infrastructure and more public transit uh, in addition to those improvements to sidewalks. Um, for housing, um, creating a housing plan to identify opportunities for affordable housing in town that was the top ranked um, choice from the students, um, in addition to other data they provided where they really wanted to see kind of cleaning up um, kind of those blighted homes that we had mentioned the, in the survey, um, supporting families and being able to, uh, for families to be able to afford to live in East Long Meadow, um, as well as um, that, uh, what we're seeing throughout kind of that emphasis on the environment, preservation of trees and land and kind of coexisting in a, a balanced kind of structured uh, housing pattern for growth over the next 10 years. Um, for ec um, economic development, we saw a lot of emphasis on the town center um, and having more family owned businesses, um, buy local campaign again. And one really interesting piece of feedback that we heard and that we uh, had a similar um, responses, but this really summarized it in a beautiful way, um, having a link a strengthened link between students and the workforce based on local student talent. So how can we keep the students in town working um, and kind of capitalizing on their strengths and what they're learning and having them kind of grow up in East Long Meadow and stay here and, and contribute back to the local economy. So that was really cool. Um, and so I'm just going to bump to the next slide and I'm going to show you the video. So I will toggle back and forth, but I wanted to summarize what we've heard um, in terms of sustainability, um, solar canopies with some um, over uh, selected parking areas was something that the uh, high school students voted uh, up upvoted um, in terms of the pre pre listed options. Um, but they also mentioned again trees, park cleanups, streamlined recycling, um, solar power where feasible in town. And with the uh, talk of the new high school, that was definitely um, re mentioned repeatedly. So how can we bridge those efforts and combine them um, for open space? Uh, what we've kind of been hearing, you know, uh, connecting existing trails and parks and the assets in town in a, in a way that makes sense and it's easier to get around um, improving Heritage Park, basketball courts again, gardening program, and just more events in the spaces uh, that exist in East Long Meadow, especially as we kind of maneuver our way out of uh, this COVID world that we've been so used to, how can we really um, safely take advantage of the what East Long Meadow has and use it to kind of bolster community events and social activities and kind of get students involved and get everyone um, back and back and um, active again in town. So. Um, Last, uh, the last two topics were um, historic and cultural resources where um, the students upvoted for a, a center, center cultural district. So that was interesting to see. And then, and lastly, investing in uh, facilities, particularly pertaining to the town's educational um, facilities and helping them prosper throughout the next 10 years. So making, and also making buildings accessible and places that students and everyone in town can be proud of. Um, and also, it was also very cool to see that people had mentioned, students had mentioned that they wanted to see more kind of participation in local government um, and how can we kind of make that a reality over the next 10 years. So that was a really um, fantastic uh, feedback that we got, very eye-opening for us. Um, and I just wanted to play for you the video that was made because it's just way too cool not to show off. <laughs> So I hope everybody can hear this. Fiona, I'm not getting any audio on that video. 
Oh. I'm sorry, one second. Let me fix that. Can you hear that now? Yep, if you could turn it up more, that would be great. On is long overdue. This master plan will cover various topics that affect our community, including transportation, how you get around East Long Meadow, not just by car, and how can we make it easier? Housing, where you live, where and how housing is built, and how to meet the housing needs of our community. Economic development, how businesses grow and operate in East Long Meadow, and what can we do to attract new businesses and retain current ones. Sustainability and climate change resilience, how to prepare for climate change and its impacts and make the town greener. Open space and recreation, improving, improving playground. So that was just a snapshot of um, what we want, uh, you know, just what we had seen. Um, I'm sorry. Can you, can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. You can hear me. Okay, great. I'm sorry. Um, the headphones. So that was just a snapshot of what of, of the video. I don't have time to play the whole thing, but if anyone is interested, I would love to share that with you all because it was really fun for us and we were very, um, uh, very excited to make it. So combining everything that we had heard and seen and kind of thinking back to the data that we had gathered, obviously the hard numbers, as I mentioned, and all of the citizen participation outreach data as well, PVPC um, and, and Barra Planning Group kind of put our heads together and had uh, created these overarching themes that are driving the goals that we, that um, in turn drive the strategies and recommendations that we'll be talking about this evening. So these themes really were the kind of, were things that boiled to the top of the conversation almost every time um, and will really drive the efforts of this plan and the um, subsequent implementation matrix. So, but with that being said, we are still, um, we're still, you know, obviously we're at the phase now where we're refining the strategies, but we are, PBPC has created a really awesome story map where you can continue to engage um, interactively online. Um, and there will be, um, there will be a link shared as well, but I wanted to show you quickly bounce over to there. So you can all see for yourselves what this story map looks like. And it summarizes the background of the project, the vision, issues and opportunities that were um, that we had seen and discussed beforehand, um, and then goals and recommendations, which is what we will be, you know, talking about today and then continue to provide um, some feedback on. So a lot of really cool drone imagery used here um, and, a, and the summary of the data that we had discussed thus far. Um, it was really um, a cool effort and we're, we're looking forward to hearing more from you all um, in, through the story map and kind of gathering extra, extra information as we finish up throughout the next month. So, with that being said, we are now going to discuss. So we're going to break out into a few breakout groups um, and then go over the strategies and recommendations um, and really kind of hash out the details there. So um, I am going to separate everybody into three groups. Uh, so if you just bear with me for a brief moment and I will get that sorted.
Hi, Erin.
Maya, we are in a breakout group at the moment. Do you want me to just randomly assign you? We will be reconvening at 7.20. I think you're on mute. I said, sure. Um, I'll just, I would like to change my name first because that's a little embarrassing. Sure. Uh, <laughs> no worries. Yeah, so just the yes. top. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Uh, awesome. There okay. we go. Okay, awesome. I am going to uh, put you in group two. So awesome. see, you at, see you at 7.30 or 7.20 rather. Okay.
All right, people are filing back in. Just gonna give them a minute. All righty. Looks like we are all back. I hope that um, everybody had uh, an enjoyable and productive conversation, hashed out any questions, what's working, what's not. Um, so now that we have reconvened as a larger group, I'm going to, we're going to do a poll exercise. So we want to get kind of a larger, so now we've, we've talked as individual groups and um, kind of hashed out um, uh, information about the strategies and recommendations and now we're going to just do kind of general polls and kind of t get the temperature of everybody and what's you know what the larger group is thinking so I have a few here um, that I am going to start so just give me one minute to bring that one up and so this and they're going to go by themes so just so, um, so we're going to start uh, with theme one, just like in the breakout groups and go from there. And I'm going to give, um, I'm going to uh, read for anybody on the phone uh, briefly what is listed and give you all time to respond. So I'm going to launch the first one now. So top three recommendations on this list. And this list is, I had to consolidate a couple here. So the first option is, discuss protection of scenic vistas and investigate protection of scenic roads and roadway trees, improve drainage and identify high risk areas for mosquito gest gestation is the second, um, explore increased density in appropriate areas near existing services. Um, and I combined that with the open space uh, residential development zoning bylaw recommendation. Require vegetated buffers next to wetlands and streams to filter stormwater runoff. Work with farmers on preservation strategies, create a green committee to work on open space events, wayfinding and similar efforts, update the OSRP accordingly, conduct alternatives and cost analysis for redesigning the Alpha at Heritage Park Lake, update stormwater management bylaw to MS4 permit standards and conduct a dam removal study for the Jawbuck Dam. Just gonna let those filter in. So for those of you viewing the survey, um, I mean, I'm, I, you, you probably figured this out by now, but if you, you, you have to scroll, uh, I believe there are 10 total. Um, and as Fiona said, we are just asking you to pick the top three. I know it's tempting to pick more, but it helps us kind of, uh, one of the, the steps of implementation is prioritize, you know, ranking the priority of um, recommendations. So this, this kind of helps. And if you click on the top, the square, then they'll, you can see them all at once. And then oh. you click again and it will go small. <laughs> oh, Catherine, that is, <laughs> that is great. All right. So give people another minute because there's a lot to go through. Oops, I minimized mine and now I can't find it again. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. You can also provide feedback in the chat. We're going to save the chat. Um, so, you know, if you know up that there was one that you felt strongly about, but I think if you minimized it, it should. It should yeah, you should be able to expand it again. All right, so still responses coming in. One thing also just based on our group, our group had such great discussion is understanding that, you know, some of these, some of this wording will again be further tweaked. So I know it might be kind of hard to vote if, if you know that uh, there will be changes. Oh, click on, okay, thanks Lori. Right. Lori said in the chat, if you click on the polls icon, which should be on the bottom, 
um, if you minimized it, it'll make yeah, it. I just discovered that. Thank oh, you. Okay. All right. We'll leave it open. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Right. And that's the thing we, um, you know, we're obviously taking into account what we heard in the breakout groups. Um, so these are definitely subject to, to fluctuate a little bit, but, um, but yeah, so, okay. So give one more minute here before I end this one. All right. So can everyone see those results? Mm -hmm. So it looks like um, creating a green committee to work on open space, hosting events, teaching, wayfinding, and supporting um, a tree committee to develop a long-term planting plan. I had consolidated those um, for the purposes of this poll because we're working just within the parameters of Zoom, but it seems like everybody is, 60% um, of folks uh, enjoyed that. So that can bubble to the, to the top. Um, and then we have a tie, uh, tie for um, second place with um, improving drainage and identifying areas at high risk uh, for mosquito gestation, um, public awareness around mosquitoes and vector-borne disease. And then also working with farmers on land preservation strategies and succession planning as appropriate. So, you know, it's so funny because we did, like I said, you know, as we've seen throughout in the survey, similar responses and in student engagement efforts. So. It's great to see. So I am going to now launch the second one. Just one second here. Okay, so this is um, two polls for theme two because we, there's a lot of recommendations as I'm sure you all saw during the breakouts. Um, your top three for each still. And I'm just going to list them off quickly for you, um, for those on the phone, working with residents to promote home occupations and cottage industries um, with adequate protections for, uh, and information provided to neighbors, um, develop community gardens near residential developments without yards, support agriculture through exploring a right to farm bylaw, appointing an agricultural commission, um, buy local campaign and establishing farmers market locations. So that was, um, uh, uh, one that I had emerged due to similarities and because of the polling. Um, support mixed housing development where appropriate and in accordance with neighborhood character. Seek developers to revitalize vacant and blighted properties. Produce comprehensive maps and wayfinding of open spaces and recreation facilities. Develop a presentation plan to note the past, present, and future preservation in East Long Meadow. Consider bylaws and ordinances that preserve cultural and historic resources, for example, demolition delay bylaws, design and site plan review, scenic roads, et cetera. Determine best practices for storage, um, digitation of backup paper files, um, and ways to make these resources more accessible to the public. And lastly, update the community preservation plan to guide the CPC. So I'm gonna need to scroll for this one as well. As I was floating around, and this was uh, um, a lot of great conversations I don't, uh, regarding theme too. I was popping in and out, so I'm excited to see the feedback here. Mm -hmm.
All right, so we're at 75%. Give people one more minute to get their responses in. As the poll is up too, if you uh, want to add additional comments about any of these in the chat, um, feel free. Especially, you know, one thing that didn't really come up in, in our group, I'm not sure if uh, how, how the other uh, two groups fared, but there were none that, uh, you know, one of the questions that we kind of floated as well was if any were just not appropriate for East Long Meadow. And so, um, uh, and, and if something gets zero votes, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to be put in the plan, just that it would be a lower priority. Mm -hmm. Right. Alrighty. So this one, okay, yeah. So a little bit of a runaway with this one. So produce uh, comprehensive maps and wayfinding of open spaces and recreation facilities, as well as additional resources for identif identifying important features and amenities. That was 73% of respondents agreed that should be a high priority. Uh, second, seek developers to revitalize vacant and blighted properties. And third, support mixed use housing development where appropriate and in accordance with neighborhood character, not to detract from the local economy or amenities. Awesome. Okay. And now number three. All right, so again, um, theme two, sense of community, and I'll just read these off. Consider developing a building maintenance guide for property owners. <clears throat> Foster in-town and regional partnerships for events and offerings that strengthen historic and cultural resources. Pursue creative forms of memory catching um, and ensure the stability of these collections. Prepare an ADA self-evaluation and transition plan that also includes historic and cultural resources and programming. Support services for seniors, disadvantaged residents, and vets. Strengthen the programs at the Council on Aging to include continued outreach, health, nutrition, and recreation programs. Provide intergenerational opportunities for engagement with uh, school-aged children and seniors. Create a Citizens Academy, which promotes engagement um, through a variety of mechanisms, including classes, information distribution. Um, identify where vulnerable residents live for check-ins and partner with the Council on Aging um, and utility providers as necessary. Ensure sign up for RAVE Reverse 911 communications um, and conduct an outreach campaign to achieve 100% participation. And lastly, improve town outreach and communication in uh, both internally and externally uh, for purposes of emergency response and uh, civic engagement. Again, feel free to ask any questions that you need in the chat. Um,
I know it can be difficult to kind of pick your top three when multiple seem important. So please feel free to comment and, and let us know, um, you know, if you were really torn between one or two when you just want to make sure that uh, we make note of that. Um, definitely, definitely tell us because I know it's hard <laughs> to choose just three. Kelly, thank you for that feedback. Um, so yeah, specific wording, um, directives like that are, are very helpful and um we'll bring back to uh the chapter office. i appreciate that i said time and again throughout our our small group that people with disabilities just seem to be a forgotten population oftentimes in the world and that on purpose but just because they tend to be more invisible so thank you thanks kelly all right, so I looks like most people, oh, a couple, I'll leave one more minute, a couple have trickled in. All righty. Another runaway with the results of this poll, 75% um, of folks uh, want wish to see support uh, services for seniors, disadvantaged residents, and veterans, um, strengthening programs at the Council on Aging to include outreach, health, nutrition, recreation programs. And this would be a really great opportunity to incorporate Kelly's comments um, mm -hmm. for folks with disabilities as well. Um, so that that's great. And so our second was, 44% uh, of um, respondents uh, felt that a, creating a citizen's academy was a high priority um, in promoting engagement um, through uh, classes, provision of classes, information, um, and opportunities to learn about different functions of local government, uh, including volunteer opportunities. So that's great. That's We always love to hear that. Oh, apologies. That was the third. I, I missed the bottom here. So actually half of folks wish to uh, prioritize in, uh, improving outreach and communication internally and externally on part on the part of the town um, to residents for purposes of civic engagement and emergency response. So um, apologies for that. That um, recommendation at 50% was number two with the Citizens Academy at 44% at number three. So Next one coming up, and we're switching to theme three now, which is center square. So we have reviewing local crash data um, and advancing in-depth traffic studies, especially for high crash locations. Um, considering adopting a town center overlay district using a new mixed use village district bylaw. I'm sorry, pursue rotary improvements to improve uh, safe access to local businesses, study alternatives to the center turn lane on the road, improve the streetscape within the right of way along North Main Street to allow safer vehicular and pedestrian access and to improve the overall uh, corridor appearance. Begin mapping cultural assets and explore the potential of an East Song Meadow Central Cultural District, complete a feasibility study for a public safety complex, and improve sidewalks and crosswalks throughout the center and along streets leading to the rotary. And I just wanted to make a note that um, it, the, the, uh, it would be a dual police and fire uh, facility that we're referencing in the feasibility study for the public safety complex.
highlight a couple of comments in the chat about adding ADA accessibility to the recommendations for Center Square, as well as expanding the rail trail north, which could really enhance and connect the North Main Street um, for alternative uh, modes of transit, particularly biking and pedestrian access. So loving these suggestions, keep them coming. <laughs> All right, so I'll give folks another minute. Fewer recommendations this time less to read. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, so ending that one. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yep, pretty clear cut what people are prioritizing here. Um, considering adopting a town center overlay district um, using the new mixed use village district bylaw um, to incentivize desired center uses, including office, commercial, residential, civic, just a whole variety of activity that is uh, for, the, for the center. So 56% of folks were in favor of that. 44% of respondents wish to pursue rotary improve. Oh, I'm sorry, I did it again. I missed a one at the bottom. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I did not scroll enough. I retract what I said. 100% of folks yeah. <laughs> unanimously agreed sidewalks and crosswalks throughout the center and along the streets to the rotary are top priority. So we think we had a feeling that that was gonna be number one. <laughs> just from what we've heard thus far. Um, second was the uh, recommendation I had just listed, um, adopting a, a town center overlay district. And third, begin mapping cultural assets and exploring the potential of this uh, East Long Meadow Center cultural district. So, awesome. Okay. So we're going into theme four now, resilient balanced growth. So these ones are a little wordy, so bear with me. Um, so the first access permitting procedures to improve the small business experience, revised subdivision rules and regs and planned unit development residential zoning to promote permanently preserved open space, open and natural spaces. Um, AKA clustering um, in a way that makes sense to the environment. Uh, create mechanisms for a transfer of development rights from key resource areas and existing agricultural lands to town center um, and other specific areas where uh, that is more appropriate. Uh, traffic data collection to assess speed, uh, pedestrian volume, bicycle volume, et cetera at key locations in the town um, and considering I merged a couple of uh, these recommendations were similar. So it was another example of just me consolidating for it to be concise, but considering in-depth study of traffic signals and multi-way stop controlled intersections. Improved payment condition through data collection um, and in, uh, maintenance and improvement uh, according to the results of the local pavement management study. Can, uh, conducting assessments to ensure uh, infrastructure complies with ADA requirements, super important as we've heard. Take advantage of state programs, including the One Stop for Growth grant portal to implement new projects and adopt policies. Invest in facilities and staff to ensure the town's education system continues to prosper and modernize. Um, continue the support of the East Long Meadow Public School Facilities Plan. Participate in and advance improvement projects as part of the Safe Routes to School program. It's a really popular state program. Um, plan housing with a housing production plan um, for eventual submission to the state. And I coupled that with exploring the benefits of adopting an accessory apartment, otherwise known as in-law zoning by law. And last but not least, establishing policies and mechanisms linking this master plan effort to staff plans and capital projects. So really seeing um, the really seeing the implementation of this plan throughout and um, marrying the efforts with uh, what on the ground work there.
All righty, it looks like everyone has voted. So I'm gonna end this poll now. <clears throat> All right, number one, investing in facilities and staff to ensure the education system continues to prosper and modernize. Um, so important. And again, an example of um, a recommendation uh, that we've heard throughout, even since the, or the genesis of this master planning process. So, um, Definitely, uh, definitely very, very interesting. And we know for a fact that this is going to be a high priority over the next 10 years. So second, we have, I believe, let me make sure I'm scrolling the whole time <laughs> and seeing everything. Um, a tie of 44% of respondents um, want, wish to prioritize planning for affordable housing with a housing production plan um, and exploring the benefits of adopting an accessory or otherwise known as in-law um, zoning bylaw and 44% of folks also wish to establish mechanisms um, and policies that link these master planning efforts to work plans, budgets, and capital projects that are being carried out by town and staff and volunteers. Awesome. Okay, so two, four more, but the last two are quick. So I'm going to raise right through the theme five ensuring sustainability. So becoming a certified green community, reviewing green infrastructure and climate resiliency policy and considering its adoption, identifying opportunities to extend the rail to the north, coordinating with um, uh, local PVC uh, and Springfield to identify opportunities there, coordinate with the PVTA on future cross town fixed route transit service, adopt land uh, or low impact development standards for new residential developments, Con uh, conduct assessment and programming. We're losing your sound a little bit. Oh. Thank you for speaking up. I thought it was just me. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. Sorry about that. All right, so um, I left off at the culvert assessment. So uh, in the last few, conduct outreach to existing businesses to make sure they're thriving, establish a partnership with East of the River Five Towns Chamber, um, especially to assist aspiring entrepreneurs and existing small businesses, employ policies to improve the economic viability of the farm community, um, including uh, actions such as streamlining permitting, um, accessory farm businesses, um, retail opportunities, things like that, and small scale uh, commercial uses. And lastly, implement management strategies for maintenance and enhanced access to recreational resources uh, like Heritage Park um, and school department and recreation department prepared plans for dual use facilities. So again, a lot of wor wordy <laughs> recommendations, um, but uh, very all very very important nonetheless so we'll give people extra time with these
All right, I'm still hearing some clicks, but give people a few more seconds to get their last votes in before we move on. All righty. So 81% of folks wanted to identify opportunities to extend the rail trail to the north. No surprise there. Another example of a recommendation that we've heard really throughout this process and is really important to East Long Meadow that we will be cognizant of um, uh, during in, in this master plan. Um, also the second portion of that coordinating to identify opportunities to connect existing facilities. So this, and then we had 50, um, let me just confirm here. Up oh, and okay, yeah. So 56% of folks want to implement strategies for maintenance and enhanced access to, uh, of and to recreational resources. Um, and school department, recreation department have prepared plans for these dual use facilities. Just so some added context there. Um, and third, 44% um, of folks wanted to employ uh, policies to improve uh, economic viability for the farm community um, through various uh, mechanisms, some listed here, you know, streamlining, permitting, et cetera. So that is fantastic. So I'm going to do our last kind of major poll. So you're all been troopers. I, we really appreciate your feedback. And this is kind of the last, the last big one. And then I have just two quick little questions after that. So, all right. So this is theme five again, ensuring sustainability. So just because the, the volume of recommendations that were produced from what we've heard, we broke it up into two polls. Um, implement building and maintenance improvements, um, including both short and long-term capital needs through transparent and inclusive planning process. We all know how important that is. <laughs> um, holding on to institutional knowledge uh, by creating a manual for each building and department um, that's regularly updated continue a, I'm sorry, conduct a parking inventory to identify under and overutilized spaces and options to consolidate. Complete a planning and feasibility study for building, uh, for a building and facilities microgrid. Um, install behind the meter solar on public buildings um, and install battery storage at town hall to provide emergency power and possibly at the library. So that one has a lot of different parts. So, um, just want to um, mull that one over for a little bit. Um, encourage businesses to practice good maintenance policies for their backup generators um, and institute emergency plans using town policy as a model. Make infrastructure improvements to the water supply system, include, um, you know, including looking to former well locations and future drinking water resources. Update the hazard mitigation plan uh, to maintain eligibility uh, for federal kind of funding. It's really um, contingent upon that. Um, encourage uh, citizens core council community res uh, emergency response team, also known as CERT uh, tr um, training. So it involves stakeholders to bolster preparedness efforts. Continue discussions with national grid on resiliency and responsiveness. And last but not least, collaborate to promote uh, mass save home energy assessments and business energy assessments um, at no cost uh, is a state, uh, state program um, and targeting vulnerable residents and businesses to save, save them money while also maintaining a sustainability mindset and green thinking. <laughs>
was my cat. What are you? Oh, you're eating my my crumbs. <laughs> you're so funny. You eat everything I eat. You eat everything the mommy eats, huh? <laughs> Well, it is dinner time. So <laughs> All righty. So I'm not hearing any more clicks. Uh, so I am going to end this one. And this one was a little bit more divided, but we have 69% uh, of folks uh, wish to make uh, infrastructure improvements to water the water supply system a priority in this plan, uh, looking to former options as well as future sources um, and where the vulnerabilities lie um, in Springfield Aren't water. Seeing the results. Oh right. yeah, can you hit share results? Oh, I'm sorry. Apologies. Yeah, so we have, uh, yeah, 69% of folks wish to see uh, improvements to the water supply system. And then we have, let me just make sure that I'm getting everything in here. Yep, 63% um, of respondents uh, wish to complete a planning and feasibility study for uh, building and facilities microgrid, which also includes other components in this recommendation, um, installing battery storage at town hall um, and behind the meter solar um, infrastructure. And 56% uh, wish to implement building and maintenance improvements um, to plan for sh both short and long-term um, uh, capital planning through uh, an open and transparent planning process. So. So is that um, SWC, the spring, is it Springfield? Are you connected to Springfield Water and Sewer? Yes. yes. Okay. So, yep. All righty. So I have um, one really quick poll for our own purposes. Um, just asking you all, did you happen to take our survey that we had circulated? Um, the survey online. Um, oh, am I, am I? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, so just, just to clarify, because I know there was a survey earlier in the master plan process. Um, so th this was a survey that we had launched this month. So the month of May, there was a survey effort. And we're just curious to see um, uh, how many of the participants tonight attended that, or not attended, but participated in. All right. <clears throat> okay. Cool. All right. I'm going to, oh, still a couple. A few more seconds. All right. That's okay. So, yeah, three quarters of folks, it's great. So, and also great that right. we, the, the four of you who didn't, that we were able to capture your feedback at the, in this opportunity as well. So thank you. Right, awesome. And my very last question for you all um, is, did you attend our visioning session as well? We just were curious to uh, see the audience that we're reaching and making sure that, you know, of course, we're, we're hearing from as many people as possible. So, so that was in February, in case you're trying to remember what we're talking about. <laughs> yes, it does seem like so long ago. It's <laughs> I know it's crazy. <laughs> All righty, so. All right, great. Okay, so 81% of folks did attend both this. Great. Awesome. All righty, so after our, all of that and all of the feedback, we want to announce our winner of our photo contest. Kelly, thank you so much. This picture really encapsulated a lot of the themes that we had been talking about, including um, not only, um, you know, making sure that we are reaching all, all folks in East Long Meadow, as well as, you know, prioritizing recreation, open space, um, a lot of the overarching themes, this picture really was fantastic and a really great encapsulation of that. And thank you for your submission. Um, so that will be uh, prominently featured in this plan, but we also will include the others as well. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have uh, a, a spaces for all of the submissions um, in some capacity, um, but we really thank you all uh, for this. They were really, really great. Um, and we, we um, cannot wait to see what the final product looks like. So I don't want to keep, I know it's eight o'clock and you all have been so fantastic um, all night. And we just want to give you, um, 
a reminder, um, if you're what is, you know, continue to stay engaged as we close out uh, the process, the project website will have the recording from this session posted, um, as well as um, any other information uh, pertaining to the project. Um, the town website also the uh, planning department page will have information, um, including contact information if needed and obviously check out the story map again um, super cool amazing effort on the part of PVPC another cool way to stay engaged. Um, and you can scan your cell phone over these QR codes um, to to go directly to the page, uh, as well as the project page at the top. Um, so just leave it. I'm going to leave it up for like just a couple seconds. Um, but yeah, please continue to uh, to to provide feedback in, in the story map um, and utilize it and let's check out all of the amazing uh, drone imagery. All righty. And lastly, we just wanted to say, you know, Obviously, we're talking about implementation of recommendations here, and this uh, plenty of um, opportunities to get involved uh, in uh, town government um, we, and looking to implement uh, recommendations in real time. So there is currently a few opening for board positions. Um, all of the positions are li um, listed here. Uh, board of Library Trustees, uh, the CPC or Community Preservation Committee, Conservation Commission, Council on Aging, uh, Cultural Council, Historical Commission, Planning Board, Recreation Commission, and the ZBA. So um, if you're interested, please reach out to Bethany um, and more information can be found on the town websites. And you might add that there is an opening on the planning board as well. Yes. Yeah, the planning board, there is an opening. So um, if, you're, if you're interested um, in getting involved, please reach out and... Yep, for the next month, we will be um, just kind of closing up these efforts. Um, so again, it's critical to provide your last pieces of feedback. We'll be uh, incorporating everything that was discussed today into the final plan um, and preparing for final submission um, throughout the next month. So with that, thank you all so very much. Uh, we really appreciate your time and your feedback. Um, and uh, it's, it's just so critical for this effort. And we look forward to engaging with you further via the story map. And please reach out with any questions or comments to uh, either myself, Catherine, Ken, or Bethany. Um, happy to, to engage further. So thank you again for attending and have an excellent rest of your night. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you, thank Alexis. You. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night.